Okay, today we are looking at what I've called trophy wife, and we start with the song. God has not given unto us a spirit of fear. God has not given unto us a spirit of fear. He has given unto us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and it's sound. That's what God has given to us. Now let's look at the example of the trophy wife in scripture. Uh, we have you know, the king that was holding a banquet for guests from far and wide, and the banquet was going on for days. And then, of course, if you look at Esther chapter 1, verse 10, on the seventh day, when the king that was merry with wine, he ordered the seven Indians who served him to bring Queen Vashti before him, wearing a royal crown, to display her beauty to the people and officials. For she was beautiful to behold. Queen Vashti, however, refused to come at the king's command, brought by his eunuchs, and the king became furious and his anger burned within him. You know, which is very typical of what you find in terms of trophy wives. Usually, trophy wives is you have an older person you know, who uh, then goes for a younger lady, probably a model, because the idea is for him to, to show her off, just like what the king uh, was trying to do here. You know, so, usually, that is the you know, stereotype. And now let's look at what were the possibilities, what had happened here. Maybe Vashti had been asking a particular favor from the king and the king had refused, you know, maybe she had tried, you know, uh, silent treatment, you know, imposed sexual, sexual sanctions, and the king was still, you know, intransigent. And so she said, she was telling herself, this is my opportunity. I need to fix him by not appearing before his guest. You know, and of course, that gave opportunity for Esther, and of course, the deliverance of the Jews, but that's the story for another day. We, see, we also have later day examples of, you know, uh, these kinds of arrangements where you can have sometimes older women, you know, going for very young boys. And of course, those women are called cougars. You know, the boys are called Benton or you know, a toy boy. And of course, we still have, uh, I know there's a particular uh, leader who also has a very young boy who is a model. And we see a bit of this kind of situation where she's trying to hold her hand in public and she flicks his hand away. And those videos have gone viral. But, you know, th there's more to this particular story. In fact, there's a moral to this particular story. Apart from the fact that Esther uh, eventually became king and, of course, led to the deliverance of the Jews. Because what the king then did was that he consulted with, you know, his counselors, you know, and his advisors. And he made a very important point. You know, he find that in Esther chapter 1, verse 22. Then he sent letters to all the king's provinces, you know, and to every people in their own language, that each man should be master. In his own house. And this is the principle that you see all through scriptures. You know, the man is supposed to be the head of the family. You know, forget that home make and meet of, you know, my wife is working, there are two streams of income, you know, I'm going to resign from my job and take care of the children. That's not your job. Your job is to provide for your family, your job is to provide a dwelling, you know, master in his own house. You know. So the idea is even if your wife uh, you know, has a master's degree and an MBA. And you guys got married when you were you at the grade 12. It is time for you to improve yourself. You know. Enroll, you know, uh, make sure you clear your grade 12 results, go on to the university, you know, get your own degree, set up a business, or go on to do a master's. You know. Make sure you are the one providing for your family, not the other way around. Your wife can support, you are the one to provide for your family. And you must trust God for this. Because this is very spiritual, you know. As long as you are providing that kind of leadership, spiritual leadership, you are providing for your family, you are going to avoid the kinds of dysfunction that we have in families, the way you have divorced, broken homes, you know, children that are wayward, because this is a spiritual principle, you know, and you need to key into this particular spiritual principle.